Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, something which you're all going to be really pleased about, and that is a new tool to remove the AI features in Windows 11. Fantastic. I can hear you all cheering in the background there. We all dislike AI. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some aspects of AI which I actually do use, and it can be useful, such as things like removing backgrounds from images, that sort of thing. That's absolutely fine, and I think that is really what it's designed to do, to be helpful. But when it becomes intrusive and it's kind of put into all kinds of apps where you really don't want it to be, it does get rather frustrating. And also, it can be somewhat of a memory and resource hog. So it's best, if we can, to try and get rid of it. So in today's video, we're going to take a look at a tool from someone called Zoic. That is their YouTube channel, or Zoikware, as they're otherwise known, on GitHub. I'll put links for all of this in the video description, so if you want to follow along, you're more than welcome to do so. And of course, as always, all the usual caveats apply, so if you're uh, using this as your main system, do your backups, make sure your system has data recovery, etc. Make a system restore point, all those kinds of things. Also, obviously, this video is for kind of entertainment purposes, or semi kind of educational purposes. You don't have to follow along what I'm doing. If you want to, that is entirely up to you. I do have to say that to uh, please the YouTube algorithm. So with all that said, let's head over to the computer and we'll take a closer look at this program and see what it can do. Okay, so we're on our Windows desktop here and also I'm gonna show you some of the things like obviously, like things like your start menu. Do you really want to have Copilot in your start menu? Is that really necessary? Probably not. Uh, often it's in your taskbar as well, and it also gets into other things like paint, for goodness sake. In paint, you just want to do doodles and stuff like that, or maybe remove some background or, I don't know, anything. So in Copilot here, we've got the image creator. Create stunning images with just a few words. Why does it need to be there? Now, don't get me wrong, generative erase and remove background are extremely useful tools. So that is why this particular program we're about to use actually only removes the image creator part of it because, well, if tools are useful, you might as well keep them, regardless of they're AI or not. That, I think, is the problem, choice. So obviously it does appear elsewhere in the system. You've got things like Recall running if you've got a Recall Plus enabled PC. There's all kinds of places where it can be. Microsoft Edge, if you go into Edge, yep, yeah, you'll probably find it up in the top there where you don't really want it. And if that wasn't enough, it's on the bar as well. Now, it won't get rid of it on the bar because that is built into the website itself, but we can get rid of it from up here. So if you don't use the Microsoft Search or Bing Search or whatever, then you probably won't see it at all because it will be removed from here as well. Anyway, with all that said, let's take a look at the software itself. Now again, like I've said, make sure you do your backups and uh, data protection routines, all that kind of usual stuff, because obviously these things can break windows. Although this particular piece of software has a quite a cool feature built in, which actually allows you to back up all of this stuff which you're removing. So if you do decide you want to revert, you can do pretty easily. So this is the GitHub page for Zoicware. This is Remove Windows AI pretty much does what it says on the tin and got the explanation about why current 25H2 build of Windows 11 and future builds include increasingly more AI features and components. This script aims to remove all of those features to improve the user experience, privacy, and also security. And it goes about telling you what the script does, how it goes through also preventing the reinstallation of the AI packages, which I think is quite a key one. So if you do your Windows updates, or there is like a hotfix, then it won't automatically just restore this, which I think is a, a pretty cool feature. It disables Copilot policies, removes the Apex packages so it can't be reinstalled, also removes them in the CBS as well, which is where they kind of hide component-based servicing. So if you, again, if you run DISM, it won't just bring all of these back, removes the AI components, or if it can't remove them, it will hide them. So I think that's pretty good. And also disables the rewrite AI feature in Notepad, and recall tasks. So you get the general idea. There's lots of things you can also check it out on their website. Also, there is a YouTube video from the creator showing you how to uh, use this and other products which are claiming to do similar, but don't do it quite as well. So this is uh, really good. And to actually run it, there's options. You can do it with a command line. So you've got command line options there, which you can copy and paste, or you can launch it with the UI. I prefer a UI, I think most people do. So what I'm gonna do is gonna copy that there. What we need to do is to open up PowerShell. 
and run PowerShell as administrator. Now you'll get the user account control come up, obviously. Click on yes. And we can close the window down in the background. We don't need that anymore. And get rid of my uh, drawing. No, I don't want to save it. And all we do is paste in the command. So paste it, press enter. And after a short while, we should get the prompt come up. And there we go. So remove Windows AI by at Zoikware. So it goes through and shows you everything it does. You can choose to enable or disable any of these. So if there's any certain aspects you want to remove, you can do that. Also, there are the box on the side there. So if you click on those, if you're not too sure what it means, you can click on that and it tells you what it does in more depth. So nice and easy to use. Also, there is a revert mode. So if you enable revert mode, you can actually put the components back. So just check on the ones you want to put back in, click on apply and it will put them back. So we don't want to revert, we want to remove. So we'll turn that off. And also, like I said, there is a backup mode. So if you turn the backup mode on, whilst it's actually removing all of these parts, it actually backs them up as well. So if you want to restore them in revert mode, it can use the backup that you've already created. So I think that is also pretty cool. So yeah, it's gonna go through, disable the registry keys, prevent AI package reinstall, pretty important one, disable copilot policies, remove the AI APPX packages, remove recall optional features, remove AI CBS packages, remove AI files, hide AI components that can otherwise be removed, disable notepad rewrite and remove recall tasks. So that is pretty comprehensive. And obviously this will change and improve as time goes on. So obviously do kind of bookmark the actual GitHub for updates, etc. So let's click on apply. And this can take a little while, so do be mindful of that. And obviously if you've got any other things running in the background, it's probably a good idea to stop those. You can keep an eye on what is going on from PowerShell there. It'll just tell you what's, what it's doing, where it's got to. Sometimes it will look like the program has actually hung because it does try to go quite deep into the system files, registry, etc. So just do be patient, let it do its thing. It will sort of revive itself every now and then, even though it looks like it's not doing anything. Again, also depending on the processor speed, your system performance, etc. Slower processor, it's going to take longer to do. Faster processor, it's going to be quicker. Simple as that. So yeah, just let it do its thing. And uh, hopefully towards the end, we'll get a message saying that everything's been done and we are able to restart the computer to validate everything has happened the way it should have. And there we go. Some time later, if you uh, look at the timestamps, I think it, that's taken roughly about five to six, seven minutes, something along those lines. So it can take a little while. So we've got the message, process has been completed, AI removal process has been completed successfully. Would you like to restart your computer now to ensure all changes take effect? So obviously make sure you've got no programs open and you can now restart your computer. Okay, so we've rebooted the computer, let everything settle down. So obviously Copilot isn't on the taskbar. We got rid of that anyway ourselves. If we click on start, Yep, there's no copilot up here. Excellent stuff. We go to the start menu. Yep, there's nothing in there about AI, which is excellent. We open up Edge, and yep, it's removed it from up there also. Fantastic. Like I said, it's going to still remain in the actual web interface because it's part of the Microsoft browser, so you can't really do a lot about that. And also, if we have a look quickly at Paint which is another one which has AI built into it. So like I said, it has still got the Copilot features, but it's only got the uh, generative erase and remove background, which I think are actually useful things to remain in paint. They are handy to have um, and they're not intrusive. It's not like it's a, an AI thing where you have to actually type in questions or like a chat GPT thing. It's literally a functional object. So I'm absolutely happy with that. And what else have we got? I think Notepad. Yep, Notepad has no AI in it either. Excellent stuff. I'm pretty happy with that. Hopefully you are too. So there we go. We've managed to remove some um, AI elements from the Windows 11 operating system. Potentially it's going to work in Windows 10 as well. I'm not entirely sure. Obviously Windows 10 technically isn't supported anymore, so people aren't really 
kind of going down that route, but feel free to give it a try, see how you get on, and let us know in the comments section if it works fine with Windows 10 as well. In fact, I might try it on Kat's machine in a minute because she's left the room, so while she's gone, I might have a go. Anyway, hopefully this video's been useful to you. If it has, smash that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe, and don't forget to hit the chime notification, that way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.